So in our last few days together, we're continuing on the road to Christmas, but beyond Bethlehem. And we saw yesterday how uh, Jesus' parents bring him to the temple. And there uh, they have this amazing encounter with a man called Simeon, who is full of the Holy Spirit and, and sees the salvation that is there in Jesus. And we're kind of halfway through that because having prayed and praised God, Simeon turns to the parents and brings words from God to them they're probably glowing in in what's going on that's what it's like when when kind of god is in the place and a person's full of the spirit you get kind of drawn into it it says here that they were marveling at his word at what he said what he was saying about this this king by the holy spirit and simeon then goes on to pray for them and to bless them asking god for his presence with them What's blessing going to look like? What will it mean for them to have God's presence with them in their lives? Well, Simeon's words have a bit of an edge, really, because he goes on to say that Jesus is going to bring about a distinction, a great divide in Israel. There'll be some who, as it were, arise through it and some who fall through it. Some will not be happy with his kingship. It will be a sign, says Simeon, that will be spoken against. He goes on to say that, that this sign will uncover what's in our hearts. And we know that what's in our hearts is not always a pretty, a pretty picture. Not what we would want others to see necessarily. Later, Jesus spoke about himself being the light of the world. And light has two effects. It can show the way, but it can also show up what's really there hiding in the darkness. Jesus said on that same occasion that people prefer darkness rather than the light sometimes. And Simeon goes on to say some strange words that kind of touch Mary. They are to Mary. He says her soul with, will be pierced like having a sword put through it. And Mary, as Jesus' mother, is going to be hurt by her son's mission. It will be costly and painful for her and we know that in 33 years time, she will see her son dying on a cross, pierced by nails. Her son will be crucified. He will be this sign. So the shadow of the cross even now is felt in her heart. I'm sure she will remember Simeon's words when her son is 33. But for now, the moment is broken as Anna, another old woman, who has been a widow for decades, who's known suffering in her life and yet remains devoted to God. She comes and she too sees the Messiah and tells everyone that the Messiah is here. And it's all very exciting again. What about us then? Well, the accounts of Jesus' birth do point to good news of great joy. That's what the shepherds were told. It's massively glorious. It's a new dawn as light shines. But there is also shade as well. Shadow encroaches. Because, of course, the reason we need God's light is because of our own darkness. We choose paths just like our ancestors do. Parts of us just seem to go in the wrong direction. It's in us. And we need to realise that Jesus is a sign that is not always welcome. Suffering is also part of our road as we follow him. Salvation doesn't come easily. It's costly. And in Jesus, God opens himself up to suffering out of love for us. Let's pray. Lord, we're reminded today that welcoming your salvation in joyful obedience, as Mary and Joseph did, can also carry a cost. Thank you, Lord, that although uh, our love for you is not shared by everyone, you paid the price for our rescue and you live that life with us, even through the shadow of suffering. Amen.